try. So, what are we going to start with? Uh, you know what? Let's go with the chair. Okay. It's a little bit more subtle. So, okay. Explosion. I'm used to turning it very That is a liberty. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of Beers with Bill. It's my great pleasure to welcome Dave Hennig, Headwaters Beverage Company founder and chief inspiration. Dave, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. So we're going to start out with with Dave's. Uh, so so Dave, Headwater Beverage Company creates non-alcoholic beverages adjacent to beer, which is an interesting way of describing it. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I I'm never going to make a non-alcoholic beer, uh, just because with the brewing background, if I wanted to make a beer, I'd just make a beer. Uh, I, I respect, you know, the, the non alk beer makers out there, and I think that, you know, it's it's a noble cause. Um, I just don't have any interest in making that, but I wanted to make something that was, you know, crafty and, and unique and, and kind of different, and that's, that's kind of, this is where I've landed. So, uh, so yeah, this is, this is, First, so there's two flavors uh, of a fruited sparkling hop water. Uh, and this, this one is mosaic tart cherry. Mosaic tart cherry. Mosaic tart cherry. Okay. So how is this different from, say, just a straight up hop water? Hop water? Uh, so I'm using fruit, um, all uh, Black River juice. Um, and I'm not using a ton of it, uh, but it's just something to to help accentuate some of the flavors that are already there in the hops so yeah it's and then uh, i'm using um acid to stabilize so for this this one i'm using ascorbic acid uh for the other one which we'll try later uh I'll use citric acid uh and to me it actually kind of comes down to the flavor profiles that those acids con contribute yeah that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how do you avoid fermentation? Because you're putting hops in, you're putting fruit in. Well, I in, mean, whatever way, shape, or form the fruit is. Mm -hmm. But that means you're adding sugar to something that's got the potential to pick up active yeast from the air and ferment. Yes. So uh, there's, there's a couple of things. First of all, I attempt to be very, very clean. In, in, um, very clean in, in uh, the, the process uh, the, on, on the way to the tank. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm acidifying, like I said, down to, uh, for example, this one is 4.1, this one is 3.9. Trying to keep that down. so. Now, that's not to say that it can't ferment. Uh, there, there's two grams of sugar. So, I mean, even if it does ferment in the can, it's not an alcoholic drink, right? I, mean, I would use less, less, or I would use more sugar than that to, to bottle condition a beer. Um, well, so, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily concerned about uh, alcohol uh, per se. Um, I, like I said, I just try to keep things as clean as possible. There's, there's no yeast. There should not be any yeast anywhere near this okay. stuff. So, okay. No, I'm just, I'm just curious. That's yeah. all. Because that's one of the, one of the most difficult things is the minute that you add something with sugar in it. Yeah. And you're, you, you're open to the air. Just yeah. the possibility of picking up natural yeah. yeast. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Um, First time I did a, a fruited uh, vinegar, 
put that in what I was doing, had it explode because I forgot about that part of it. So, fair. Yeah. yeah. So, how does it, is it, so your background is sound engineering? And that, it was a musician. That, that, yeah, that's that is what I went to school for many years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how does one go from sound engineer uh -huh. to creating beverages that are not alcoholic and on uh, you know adjacent to beer? I'm glad you asked. Uh -huh. So when I was uh, working in sound, uh, I. I this was back when we were actually living in Kitchener. Um, I had a recording studio in my basement. I was trying to make a go of it. I was working part time at Starbucks. Um, I actually worked there for five and a half years. And that's where I started getting the knack for creating beverages. Um, <clears throat> fast forward. Uh, I left Starbucks because we had our first kid and my wife said, you're not making any money. <laughs> you need a real job. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I, I worked some really, really crappy jobs uh, while I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. Um, it, it's really what happened. And, and, um, Funny enough, uh, it was, this is a really long time ago. Um, it was when Inasanti first opened up. I would go in and talk to Steve and he asked me, he's like, do you, do you brew? Cause I was, I'd already been into craft beer for a lot of years at that point. I said, no, no, I, wouldn't really know what I, what to do, and, and he said, "You you really should." Uh, so actually, it's I guess it's sort of Steve's fault. Okay, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I mean, I started out home brewing. Uh, I got those like Mr. Beer kits. Um, <laughs> um, it it I, I made one, uh, and then I was like, I think I can do something better than this. Uh, I, I had the English, I think it was the English dark or something like that. Uh, I started adding molasses and like three times the hops and like, you know, just messing with Ed. And I mean, my first, my first turn with my own kind of take on it, it tasted like Rifleman's Ratchet. Do you remember, do you remember? Black Creek, Black Creek had their, like, yeah. their brewery, and they had, like, those, those, like, classic, you know, turn of the century beers or whatever it was, and, and, yeah, this, this beer tasted like Rifleman's Ration, I was like, all right, I think maybe I can do this, so we ended up moving to Orangeville, uh, and uh, so I had, like, actually a, a garage that I could use for home brewing. And the very first thing that I did was make a gluten-free coffee porter for a friend of mine who's fatally allergic to everything beer. But I said, this is a travesty. You can't go through life without having a beer. Yeah. And it worked. And the rest is history. <laughs> How did you make a gluten-free coffee beer? How did I make it gluten-free? So uh, Snowman Brewing still existed at the time. Yeah. And so we went out, we bought a bag of millet and uh, okay. we used some oats and we used some Belgian candy sugar and we used some molasses and what else did we use? This is a long time ago. <laughs> That's okay, you answered my question because you used millet. Yeah. Because it's really hard to brew with something that has no gluten in it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and rice, rice no. has a level of gluten, in it. so it can't be gluten free. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was it's interesting that we were brewing in a bag. Uh, I mean, my first time, and the bag was on the bottom of the kettle, and it scorched, and it burst, 
was such a disaster. It was incredible. It was incredible. I don't know how we ended up with a palatable beer, um, but it actually turned out, and I was, I was, I was bitten by the bug. So, so, so you you moved from being a home brewer to to working for there my my networking right. Hockley Valley Brewing. Hockley was, Valley. That was my very first job. It took eight months of begging Andrew for a job. Um, and yeah, it was, I mean. So, so did you ever, in, in the previous five years, six years that you were involved in craft beer, did you ever redo that mill up there? No, no. I, I mean, I don't remake a lot of beers. Uh, Okay. I think it's the ADHD thing. Okay. <laughs> I just I get bored real quick and I make something else because yeah, well, like you, you shiny new toy game. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I don't get a lot of time to brew anymore. I mean, especially when I was working in like yeah, at breweries and, and brewing and, and that. I mean, I didn't have any time to do it at home. So unfortunately, but. So what became the impetus to go from being a brewer to making beverage? So uh, as, as late as the summertime, I was actually expecting to make, to, to start a brewery. Um, okay. uh, I had a couple of guys that were involved. Uh, we were, we, we had a place um, kind of somewhat secured uh until i found out that the realtor had lied to me about zoning and, and water source two fairly important things in a brewery yeah. um uh and basically the guys kind of backed out on me and i was like well i've been unemployed for almost a year and i really need to do something i gotta work and so uh i couldn't find a space and I mean, licensing to start up a brewery is expensive and I had no money and I started playing with some stuff at home and I was like, wait a second, I can do this. Because the non-alc option was actually going to be a part of, that was part of the business plan for the brewery. Is so I was going to do a bunch of the non-alc stuff. I was going to make a kombucha. I was going to do like a, a bunch of yeah. different things. Um, and, and because I... I'm not legally allowed to make beer commercially right now. I'm making non-alcoholic stuff. And to be honest, I, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, there's a lot of things I can do and a lot of things to explore. And so why not keep going? See, see what happens. What's been the most challenging thing? <laughs> just one you can just give one. me as many challenges as you want uh, <clears throat> this probably won't come as a surprise um, money <laughs> money is a challenge um, especially when you're starting with next to nothing so um, yeah it's th that's certainly been a challenge um, there's there's been the challenge of streamlining the process. Um, I mean, my first batch uh, I made at the end of August uh, was five hex, uh, five hectoliters, and put it all in 50 liter kegs, drove it down to Caledon Hills. They threw it in their bright tank, recarved it, canned it. Here you go. Um, and I flew through it unexpectedly. And so made a 10 heck batch, put that to 30 liter kegs. And basically I was canning uh, here in Cambridge and uh, it was, it just became such, such a nightmare. It, it basically took three rounds of canning for each batch that I did. And yeah, anyway, it, it's, it was, it was a nightmare and it was not, not really sustainable. So, um, but I've kind of figured things out. I'm working on getting a canner. So, money, 
uh, again, being an issue. Um, but uh, also, um, in the meantime, uh, I've worked out uh, a, a deal with Farm League, and, and we actually made a batch of the Citra Orange Mango, if you'd like to try that. Let me uh, finish this real quick. This, by the way, was a batch done today. Yes, we just can't today. And, uh, so I am really, really excited about this one. I'm thrilled with how it's turned out. And Uh, yeah, uh, I, I was joking around with the guys that, that this was going to be called the under 110 special edition. Under 110. Under 110, because it was all done in one place, as opposed to several. Over, <laughs> over. Yeah, numerous trips and anyway, yeah. Yeah, the old way of doing things was not good. Well, no, <laughs> you were uh, making it in one location and driving it to another location to can it, and then driving to another location to store it. Well, bringing it back, unloading, my labels didn't work with their labeler, yeah. so I had to hand label 30 cases at a time reload them back into my truck and then put them in the cold storage on another part. So I'm working out of hardwood uh, and my cold storage that I'm renting from them is on a, in a different spot in the farm. Yeah. So anytime I'm, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was a lot of handling. <laughs> a lot of handling. A lot of handling. A lot of driving back and forth from, from Aaron to Cambridge and back. Yeah. And so, so my truck that I got at the end of August Again, money. <laughs> Jeez, um, already has close to nine thousand kilometers on it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing a lot of driving. I hear you on that. <laughs> so, so who's your market? Who is my market? Um, I would say craft-centric uh, folks, probably millennial-ish. I mean, it's because craft kind of goes beyond the typical age orders I would say but yeah um, really I think it's uh, people who probably are looking for something a little bit healthier uh, maybe looking to drink a little bit less uh, or people who are looking to not drink at all um, uh, but still want something Something that they don't need to compromise uh, flavor. Uh, you know, having something interesting, right? Like there's, I mean, I, I looked around and, and you know what? Like there's, you know, Wellington's probably the, the biggest one that, that, you know, that makes fairly commercially available uh, hop water. Yep. Um, but I mean, Good Lot makes some really good stuff too. And, and I think Fixed Gear uh, still makes some as well. Uh, like there's, there's definitely a few around that around that that are available, but I noticed that nobody was using fruit, and I thought, wait a second, we've been using fruit for IPAs and sours for, and I mean, who knows what else? All the Belgian beers, right? Yeah. For for years and or centuries even, and nobody's doing fruited hop water, and so I thought, well, maybe this could be a thing. Okay. So. Without giving away a trade secret. Without giving away a trade secret. Uh -oh. if, if it's a trade uh -oh. secret, we won't talk about it. <laughs> okay. Um, now, while Wellington makes their hot water using yeast, mm -hmm. how do you get the esters and flavor out of the hop into this beverage? Uh, it's a combination. So uh, I am using a liquid dry hop, um, but very recently, uh, Mark Haas has um, done very, uh, it's not strain, but like hop specific um, liquid dry hops, right? So yeah. Citra, Mosaic, 
Um, actually, this this year they've released Galaxy and Eclipse as well. Excuse me. There there may be a Galaxy Peach in the future. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, but oh, that's may that's the, may the fourth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, anyway, so yeah, so I mean, there's there's obviously the the hop specific uh, hops that I'm using. Uh, in this, in the dry hop, but I, it's uh, the, the juice. Uh, definitely, I, I pick juice that goes with, I mean, citra, yeah. orange, mango, yeah. that kind of makes sense. And the mosaic tart cherry, that makes sense. I was going to do a blueberry with the mosaic, but I decided tart cherry instead. So, anyway, um, but then also the acid, actually. Yeah. Uh, like the citric acid plays really nicely with. with all of the flavors with like the orange and the mango and the citra. Uh, the ascorbic acid plays really nicely with the the, the cherry and the, the mosaic. Uh, I I find there's like a, a touch of that blueberry skin almost in, in the in the finish of the, the first one that we had. Yep. So but anyway, the, I don't know if I've answered the question or if I'm just talking. <laughs> answer the question. That's right. I'm just curious because I know that that when you start doing the hot water, getting the hot flavor in is one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. Well, you know what? I I'll be honest. I started playing at home with my soda stream. Yep. Uh, and I had this little tub of this liquid dry hop, and I literally had to dose it with with. Tip of a butter knife, I would just yep, dip it in and like dissolve it. And uh, I mean, I found out really quick how much not to use. <laughs> uh, it, starts, it starts getting really, really dank, um, uh, really quick. Uh, so you, you you've got to use a bit of a gentle hand, right? But uh, you're telling me you can actually over hop something. I know, I know, it's shocking. <laughs> I was I was there for the bitterness voice, and and you can definitely definitely overhop something, dear lord, those, those old <laughs> devil dancer and green flash and oh, so, so if people were to try to get a hold of this right now, where yes. would they be able to buy it? Holy short of, short of ordering for you. Short of ordering, uh, so uh, a lot of breweries and bottle shops. Uh, but uh, there's, I'm I'm also in two distributors, uh, so designated drinks, non non okay. uh, distributor out of London. Uh, I'm also in small batch dispatch uh, in their marketplace. Uh, but then, if you want to support your local breweries too, uh, I mean, um, let's see, uh, Black Swan in Stratford. Um, Reverence here in Cambridge, uh, there's Counterpoint in Kitchener, Block 3 in St. Jacobs. Um, I feel like I'm missing one. Um, and then Royal City in Guelph, uh, Mono, Mono Center Brewing in Mono, Both barnstormer locations, so Alliston and Barry, Redline and Barry. So, so you've been running around a lot. Oh, Cliff, Clifford in Hamilton as well. Clifford. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been, I've been. <laughs> yeah, seeing as this whole thing started at the end of August, I've been, I've been, I've been moving. So, what's been the most surprising thing? How well it's gone over. Yeah. Yeah, I. I unequivocally how well it's gone over. I was convinced that I was going to need a part-time job. Um, but I mean, we just did the third batch of the citra orange mango. And so that's that's 2,500 liters of, of that hot water, plus a thousand of the, yeah. So I was not expecting this, so. I think it's great. I'm not complaining. No, 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 I don't. I'm certainly not complaining about success. So, yeah. Um, what do you think is driving it?
friends. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, no, you know, I, I honestly, it, the, the level of support that I've gotten, and, and I've, I've actually, maybe not to you, but I've, I've certainly said, so Graham at CounterPoint and Graham at Block 3, both of them from day one, like they were the first deliveries. Um, and I know that they've been, you know, whether their friends want to try it or not, they're trying it. <laughs> so, but no, it's honestly, it's been, it's been great. The, the level of support from, from the brewing community has been incredible. So, yeah, that's, uh, so that's part of it. But I think, I mean, there's certainly been a trend uh, and especially like with the, with all the reports coming out that, you know, now even having more than two drinks a week is unhealthy. I don't, is it really? I don't know. Let's not go there. But I mean, I, I think that a my, lot of my, people- My grandmother, the, the, woman, the woman who kicked my ass almost every time I saw her, had a very simple philosophy and that is anything in moderation will not kill you. you know, if, if, if you want to have a beer, have a beer. Drinking a two four a day will kill you, but drinking a beer a day is not gonna kill you. Wow. I mean how how long did the Queen live and she was drinking gin every day, right? George Burns? I mean he was he had scotch every day plus his cigars. I mean yeah. I yeah, I mean yeah. I we're mean, not we're so, not like I said, we're not gonna go down. But no, you know what, I think there there's certainly been a trend to towards uh drinking more mindfully, right? Um, and, and, you know, maybe not day drinking quite as much, right? <laughs> and so uh, I, I think that's that's been, you know, part of it is, you know, uh, people have said to me, you know, I, I don't feel like having a beer in the middle of the day, but I want something that kind of feels the same. And so, you know, that's, they'll, they'll have some of this during the day while they're working, right? And so, yeah, I, I, I think that's that's been a bit of a driver too. Um, yeah. So just, you know, societal kind of shifts and attitudes and so. How's family through all of this? I mean, there's a huge amount of stress when you start a business. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, I haven't felt this good in a very long time. And that's actually coming across with the family. And I mean, I was laid off for a long time too. Uh, and so they were used to having me around and that took a bit of a, I mean, they still tell me that they want me around, except that when I was actually around all the time, we're not hundred percent sure that's what they wanted. Eh? Not really. Not really. Why is Daddy angry so much? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I had my wife tell me that. <laughs> you know, every time I'd work in the U.S. to be cool, I miss you and everything else. And I get home, and then a week later, it's like I'm not really sure I want you back here right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So yeah, they. You know what? Honestly, like they they're seeing the. The positive uh, changes just in my attitude and, and my outlook. Um, so, have you rewrote your business plan? Because you, you 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 allude to the fact that you had a business plan for a brewery doing non-alcoholic beverages as adjacent to it. Now you're doing non-alcoholic beverages. So, have you rewrote your business plan? Uh, I'm actually in the process of, of doing that right now yeah. uh, with with somebody. Uh, somebody who is much better at writing business plans than myself. <laughs> um, yeah, to be honest, I, I was uh, I was sitting down in front of the computer for the last couple of weeks trying to try to get it out. I know what I want to say and none of it was coming out. And yeah, I finally reached out. I was I was in the town of Orangeville economic development. I said please do you know somebody that can help me? So, so yeah, we had a meeting yes uh, this morning, and we have another meeting tomorrow. And uh, 
hypothetically, I should have a business plan on Friday. Then I can go to the bank or something. Maybe, maybe, and I can say, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I think everyone who has a small business asks himself that on more than one occasion. Absolutely. I can tell you the first day I, I had that. Um, yeah. I had, I had uh, some grandiose ideas that I was going to use a beer gun. Uh, I, keep in mind, I really didn't think that this was going to sell the way that it has been. Uh, so I thought I was going to, you know, can off of, of cats with a beer gun. Um, and so it took me 12 hours uh, to do five 30 liter kegs. Uh, just the back and forth, like, because I was trying to keep them cold in the cold room. And like I said, it's in a different spot on the farm. So it was a lot of, it was a long day. Uh, and I, I had forgotten my scale at home. The next day I came back, I had 16 cases and I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is okay. This is, it's a long day. I'm thrilled with this. Started going through and weighing the cans. And I ended up with six cases of low fills. But that was also the first day that I looked at my bank statement and my credit card statement, and I thought the wrong one is bigger. <laughs> that, that was that was the first day I was like, you know what? Maybe this isn't such a great idea. <laughs> but here we are. It's. I've survived another couple months after that. Yep. Asked myself the same question a few more times, but we're still here. <laughs> so, so what's next? What's next? Um, yep, we can do that. Let's, let's. So I have a special treat for you. It's uh, in a mason jar. Uh, I blended this myself this morning. Please, people don't pay any attention. This is illegal. <laughs> Absolutely illegal. Yeah. Uh, uh, this morning, yeah. But uh, you know what? The NFT must have fallen off. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so uh, I am. So my whole vision for this is to kind of use the brewery mindset of having some pours and then doing seasonals and one offs and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, this is part of my collaboration series. Uh, that collaboration series is called Lovers and Other Strangers. Uh, there was a CHFI radio show in the 80s uh, where Sandy Hoy would try to seduce the city of Toronto. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just, I love that name for, for collaboration series. Uh, but I, we, We've kind of added to that too, uh, just to kind of give it like a little bit of weight at least. But um, so each collaboration, the collaborator gets to choose uh, the local charity uh, that will put 10% of the proceeds towards. So this one is called Hurry and Wait. It is a blended uh, bourbon barrel aged cold brew coffee. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I say blended because um, it's it's about half and half uh, Sumatra that was done in the in the bourbon barrel, uh, and actually, so the rehydrating water that I used in the bourbon barrel was used to brew the coffee, and then it went back in the barrel, where it's been sitting for for a few weeks now, uh, and then I brewed another coffee, uh, a Brazilian coffee, and I blended it to like 50 50. So you got a whiff of that earlier. Yes, I did. In the parking lot. So do you, you might want a fresh glass because the uh, sorry. Talking to Tom. He uh, came in, he's joined us here today. Late son. So The aroma on this is amazing. I, I wish we had smell o vision um, but uh, yeah, go, go for it, man. It's all yours. Uh, the aroma is amazing. You get the Sumatra right away. Mm -hmm. 
then you get that underlying bourbon. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And the uh, so the and the Brazilian coffee is all like coffee cherry. Um, yeah, there's okay. that's that cherry flavor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, I was. I had been well with with the brewery. I'd been planning to do some cold brew coffee as yeah. well, uh, and so I was. I had been working on some stuff, and and I really loved the aroma on that Brazilian. But I found that there wasn't really a lot of body. No, and so, so the cherries, it's there. It's very subtle. It's, yeah, it's the tertiary tone that comes through. Yeah, and I, I when I had the idea for the bourbon barrel, I thought, oh, if we're gonna blend it this would be an ideal candidate because it's got all of these crazy heady aromas that'll go really nicely with yeah. everything in the Sumatra and the barrel and all of that, right? So I could just live here. <laughs> like there's like some of that vanilla and caramel and uh, I, I hope I'm making everybody jealous. Uh, so Christmas, uh, this this should be available uh, Christmas -ish time. That's 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 the plan. Um, okay, we can have it by the 9th of December, which is when the Christmas party happens here for the kickoff annex. That yeah, might be a little tight, but I'll try. I'll try. You're going to show up. You're going to join the band, right? You're going to play. Sure. <laughs> Is there a kazoo? <laughs> Actually, Shelly Burns was, was there. Is she coming? She offered to, to uh, be a DJ okay. before the band comes up. Nice. And I'm trying to take her up on that. Cool. DJ Chilhays. Yeah. DJ Chilhays. <laughs> what was the inspiration for this? Do you like coffee and bourbon? Um, well, it kind of comes back to the beer adjacent sort of okay. kind of twist. And I mean, cold brew coffee. I mean, well, I'm what, Starbucks has it on nitro, right? I mean, they're basically just trying to make coffee into a stout. Right, so I thought, well, your bourbon barrel aging stouts, I mean, this could be interesting, and it happens to be interesting, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm thrilled with how that turned out. I am getting it tested, uh, to make sure that it fits into the, the non alcoholic uh range. Okay, so I don't taste any alcohol, um, but that's always the sneakiest kind. Are you gonna, <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna can it on nitro? No, uh, it's not gonna get canned on nitro, no. It'll be canned still, but- uh, Canned still, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about giving it like a, a touch of- Carbonation. A, a, just like a touch, uh, like to make it almost like cask. Yeah. Level, but I don't know. I, I that's I, always a hard call. I keep waffling. I keep waffling. So 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 this poured this poured on ice. So it's absolutely ice cold would be phenomenal. Deadly. Because I used to I used to try that at kickoff. When Graham first started the cold brew coffee, I would bring it in and that would be my non-alcoholic. You want something with a lot of flavor here, take this on ice. Nice. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So now what else? Uh, there's, so the third core brand, um, and I won't have this probably until the winter and like when I get properly set up to be able to do everything out of Heartwood, um, I'm planning to do a sparkling white tea with lemongrass and berry. So that one's called, that one's going to be called the Golden Goose. Uh, 
golden goose. Yes, yeah. blaze the golden goose. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then but going forward, I mean, for the spring, I want to do a strata strawberry lavender hop water, um, and then for the summertime, I want to do uh, Oak de Provence with uh, orange peel. And I'll do like a combination of bitter and sweet orange peel. Okay. And that's uh, a lot of work. Well, you can get dried orange peel to at any homebrew or well or PSG. Uh, but I mean really that's that's you know the stuff that goes into the, the Belgian beers, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'm I'm not a stranger to work as we've already discussed. Yeah, discussed that, yeah. <laughs> Talking about cleaning uh, tanks out, yes. Yeah. Scrubbing yeah. the inside. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's definitely one of the things that I miss about like working right in a brewery, um, which is probably weird for a lot of people to hear. Um, but I don't know. I, I think I'm just a brewery rat. I got I got bitten. I had the disease. I, uh, day one, day one at Pockley, I walked in and Andrew said, if you want to be a brewer, you can't be afraid of getting wet. And I took that to heart. And, and I don't think I've had a dry day in a brewery since. So, yeah. Yeah, not even the cider, man. Yeah, that was an interesting transition going from Ockley to Carmen. It it was um, because before that, I had actually been offered a job at a brewery, um, and they couldn't afford to hire me at the time, so they basically recommended me to Tommy's, where I became the assistant cider maker for a year. Um, and, but it's, it's crazy how much uh, you pick up those little things from each kind of job or experience or whatever. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget, uh, the, the, the day that I sat down and literally I did a tasting of different acids. I had no idea that, you know, acids could, could contribute flavor. Um, turns out they can, and and clearly, yeah, it's uh, it's worn itself out, right? So, yeah, um, I will use a touch of malic acid in that uh, golden goose because I want to get just a hint of that green apple in there. Okay, so, it's basically Sauvignon Blanc. It's not at all. It hasn't even walked past a grape, right? So. Yep. That's sort of, maybe, kind of. So what was the most interesting thing you learned being a cider maker? Trying to think how to say it. <laughs> you know what? Uh, there's <clears throat> there's a uh, so I'm not gonna say who's who. Uh, of course not. Um, now there's there's definitely it's funny because I feel like cider in Ontario. Uh, maybe not elsewhere, but certainly in Ontario, is sort of kind of viewed as an alternative to beer, right? Uh, sort of the, the craft beer, but like not really. And um, now, cider is a fruit wine, uh, and you've got you've got two two kinds of cider makers. You've got the cool ones. <laughs> and you have the winemakers. <laughs> yeah, that's probably um, an app description. Uh, and I really, I didn't, I, 
I didn't realize how much, because I mean, I'm coming from the brewing world where, uh, yeah, I'm coming from the brewing world where for the most part, everything's cool. You know, there's obviously people who are not, but um, it, it's, it's certainly a very, very different atmosphere that I was not expecting at all. Um, yeah, it, it's, cider's a really interesting world. Uh, now, I, I think I mentioned that I do work out of Hartwood and I will, I will say that they are the greatest people. Uh, they, they, they are, they're the cool people um, that I was talking about earlier. Uh, very, yeah, they're just, they, their generosity and kindness and, and, and just helping me out uh, through all of this has been absolutely incredible. So, so yeah, Hartwood, definitely the cool people. Uh, uh, Brent and Mal have both been on the show. Yeah. Matter of fact, the first time Brent was on, he was intrigued by the fact that El Val should have been here. Everybody's more interested in the farm. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. My kids love the farm. Listen, there's 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 no experience like going there yeah. and seeing the little things. Oh, absolutely. That's exactly what they came home and told yeah. my wife about. It. So yeah. Yeah. I, I had to do a bit of work on a Saturday and yeah. and I was like, well, why don't you guys come and wonder? So, yeah. So, and you can do that here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was great. They, they keep, Daddy. When can we come back to work? <laughs> well, I have some labeling. <laughs> I need done. One label later, out to the field. Yeah, exactly. See you, Dad. I'm done. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, My dad or my dad. My my son actually wrote me a note. Uh, Dad, I will work for you for free. They're like, I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> You're 10 now, but you will be 16 one day. <laughs> well, I'd like to be there when you pull that out at 16. I, I, I like to be there. I feel like it's already far too late. I think my wife pitched it. <laughs> 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 so you mentioned you like to get wet when you brew beer. So I always ask my guests, particularly <laughs> breweries, um, their funniest beer store. Funniest beer story. Wow, there's so many. There are. I have a picture on my phone, which is over there. Give me one second. Okay, we'll have a little musical interlude while you grab your phone. Do we have 70s elevator music? <laughs> uh, okay, let me see if it's. I'm sure it's still in here. It's got to be. Um, and I know that he, so he doesn't have Instagram, so he doesn't know that I'm on here. So he probably will never see this. Uh, I still don't ever assume that. Uh, way back. Go oh, way back. This is way back. So I, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to find it, but um, I still remember. So it, when I was working at Hockley, it was, it was pretty cool because Hockley was like a five minute drive from my house. So like I would walk or ride my bike or, or what have you. And um, my wife would bring my son by. So my first day at Hockley was my wife's first day of not leaves with our middle yeah. kid. Uh, so my son would have been about three. We would have our canning. 
we sit him on a <coughs> on a pile of skids, and he would just sit there in awe of, of you know everything going on, and and it was awesome. Like he would he would beg to come into the brewery. Uh, now it. <clears throat> Did I share it with you that my kids, um, they, they're, they're interesting. Uh, they crush Heineken zeros. Uh, my, my 10 year old son, my seven year old daughter, uh, they'll be out playing with the neighbors and dad, can I have a beer with dinner tonight? <laughs> and all the friends are just like, what? It's non-alcoholic. Uh, so when my son was six years old, uh, I had a Partake IPA uh, and I let him try it. And uh, his response was, it's pretty hoppy. It's not an everyday kind of beer for me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so th this kid actually likes Partake Stout as well. Um, she's going to be so much trouble, <laughs> so much trouble, <laughs> but anyway, so all that to say, I, I can't find the picture now, but it literally, I came out, uh, or I came into the brewery one day, um, Andrew was cleaning the tank and he had to like really get in there. Now, Andrew is six foot four. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm five foot eight when I'm not slouching, uh, which is never. Um, anyway, Andrew's this gigantic guy, and I come out into the brewery, and all I see is these legs and a pair of rubber boots sticking ninety degrees out of the tank. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea what was going on, but uh, I mean. I wouldn't say that's the funniest brewery story, but like that's, it was, you had to be there, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It was hilarious at the time. I did get a picture of it. Uh, and I just, I'm so he's in the fun. tank cleaning, but his legs are hanging out. Yeah. I, I don't know how he was even supporting himself. He must have really long arms or something, but um, because just, I was trying to do the math and I'm like, I don't know how you're doing that. Because <laughs> you're literally sticking straight out. Like your feet are not supported by anything. And yeah. I mean, I've had some some fun stories. Actually, this is maybe not funny, but um, one of the breweries that I was working at, uh, the, uh, the SOP for cleaning the tank, uh, the converted dairy tank, horizontal, was to go, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, <laughs> go in with, you know, you've got your gloves and your, yeah. your eyewear um, with a, a mixing bowl of, of caustic yeah. and, and the rag. Yeah. Uh, go in and, and scrub. So I would put on my boots. Uh, so first of all, it's horizontal, so it's Got a nice little. <clears throat> well, there's no flat surface to stand on it except right in the middle. No, uh, and um, caustic is really slippery. Yes, it is. Uh, especially rubber boots. Um, anyway, all that to say, uh, I landed in a pool of caustic. With uh, I, I haven't checked recently, but I I may still have a scar on my on my backside, but. Anyway, so when this was going on, the boss, just outside of where I was, was having a meeting with a licensee. So I casually climb out of the tank, walk over to where they are, excuse me, grab the bottle of vinegar, casually walk to the bathroom, drop the pants, Dousing myself with vinegar to get the oh my gosh, caustic. Yes. Oh, it was. Uh, yeah, it was, it was. Maybe not a funny story, but people laughed. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're laughing now, but it was serious. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I had an extra hole in my backside. 
Perfect. <laughs> anyway, that was that was an interesting day. That was an interesting day. But uh, yeah, there, I have lots of those kinds of stories. <laughs> I think some WSIB is calling me right now. <laughs> Jeez. We have a few minutes left. Okay. Yeah. What would you like to tell us? What would I like? Oh, boy. Um, this is usually when Derek, who's not on tonight, would type in drink more beer. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's certainly not a bad thing. I, words of wisdom. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? Honestly, I don't know. I'm not big on 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 words of wisdom really not intentional words of wisdom okay okay so i um, won't put you on that spot then no it, you know what it, I, I i will say like this this whole journey has been absolutely unexpected and ridiculous and and fantastical and I have a lot of gratitude for, for the support that I've gotten from, from, you know, the industry and, and the friends that I've made over the years that I've been in the industry and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely never expected to be here, um, making on out drinks and, and attempting to make a living at it. Um, not making a living yet, let's be honest. Well, <laughs> I'm working, on, attempting to make I'm working on it. So, but yeah, I it life is funny, you know, you you never ever end up where you thought you would ever. That's true of a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so Dave, thank you for giving us the gift of your time and sharing your story with us. We all truly appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. This, this has been fun. This is like what the third time we've had a conversation now. And you know what? They're all at least this long, right? They were. Yes, they were. So uh, I could have say I went home on I went home on uh, Friday last week, and I said to my wife, I said Dave was in to see me. I should have recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm out in Cambridge a lot, so yeah. I mean, anytime, anytime. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for your time and sharing with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. And, and yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And and, and, and next week, it, we'll we'll look at that in a minute. I'm going to shut the recording off. Okay. Next week, uh, Royal City, they finally got the beer room open, and I actually emailed Cam and said, "Hey, here you're open, and we're going to have a show." And he was in the process of emailing me to tell me, hey, I'm open. We need to do the show now. So nice. we decided on uh, next week is, was the best time for him. And so next week we'll be live from Royal City. Thank that, you. That room is gorgeous. Yeah, they did a beautiful job with it. Nope, I won't say. Always do it.